Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokeaim here, coach of the Bronx Beartix with my RU and NU draft breakdown analysis, whatever you want to call it, for the UCL. I, of course, like I said, am PokeMMD, coach of the Bronx Beartix, and this is season two of the UCL. Now, quickly to recap before we will go into the mons that you can see that I drafted. For OU, I drafted Kieran Black, Garchomp, and Manaphy. And for UU, I drafted Reuniclus, Snorlax, and Mega Aggron. Now, if you guys actually want to see my thought process on those drafts, there is a playlist down below for all of UCL Season 2 for the videos that I've uploaded so far. And uh, I made videos about the mods that I drafted. Now, I also want to give a big shout out to my boy Leo, aka Six Foot Hacks. Uh, today, I wasn't able to be there for the draft. The draft is usually like five to six hours long. I think today was a little bit shorter. Uh, no idea why, probably because of the tier, but um, it's usually around five hours plus, and I was just, I, I couldn't be home today. So I had my boy Leo, I texted him or DM'd him, whatever, my draft, and he kept me up to date with everything because I could answer my phone where I was at, or at least look at my phone from time to time, and he made sure that I got the mons that I wanted, or told me when one of the mons I wanted was sniped. So big shout out to him, thank you so much, bro. You are a real friend for that. And um, yeah, anyway, so. Today was the RU and the NU draft. Now, as we saw from my team, I uh, had some pretty powerful hitters from OU, and then from UU I had a lot of bulk. However, I did not have a ground resist at all my team. Not to say that any of my Pokemon at all are going down to ground moves. Mega Aggron is honestly probably taking the least from ground moves, even though it is uh, super effective versus it, just because of filter and it's obviously great defenses. But my first overall draft for this, like my first pick overall, and I actually got really lucky because the draft order was randomized every single time. So for OU, I was lucky enough to get first. And for UU, I was lucky enough to get fifth. And it turns out for RU when it was randomized again, I was lucky enough to get fifth one more time. And thankfully, I got pretty much the first pick that I wanted, which was Tangrowth. Tangrowth gave me a ground resistance. It gave me a Pokemon with Sleep Powder. And um, I really wanted it just because of that ground resistance. And obviously, Regenerator. Regenerator meaning I'm getting back a third of my health. Um... Every single time I bring it back in and uh, this thing gives me the option to run Rocky Helmet. It basically gives me a great Mon that can soak up physical hits no matter what and just be a great pivot. Look at this defense. Uh, this is bold, max, max. 404 HP, 383 defense. And uh, it also gives me, you know, if I want to run leftovers on it, I can even run the Assault Vest. Tangrowth has great utility in Leech Seed, in Sleep Powder, as well as Knock Off and Toxic. Uh, it has really, really, really solid special attack. I'll show you its max special attack. Um, it's not 282. It is uh, 350, so really, really solid special attack with a great move pool to boot. It has um, great stab in grass, great grass stab. Uh, on the physical side being power up, on the special side obviously with energy ball and giga drain. Um, it also has earthquake, knock off, I can run a hidden power, I can run focus blast, grass not leaf storm, um, even moves like poison jab, rock slide if necessary, hidden power of my choice, and it obviously has great recovery or decent recovery move in synthesis if I choose to run a more defensive set, but Honestly, this just gave me a pivot. Um, it gave me another electric resist for Manaphy. And it just gave me a Pokemon that can take on pretty much any physical attacker in the game. Uh, outside of really, really strong fire types like Victini and Darmanitan. Uh, it gives me a great pivot if I do run the Rocky Helmet on this. Just taking off a percentage of my opponent's HP. And uh, I wanted something that can just support me as well with potential Stun Spore and Sleep Powder. As well as give me a switch in because... Um, for my OU draft, which ended up being Kieran Black and Garchomp, and then obviously I retained Manaphy since I won Season 1 of the UCL. Uh, Manaphy was the pro uh, Pokemon that I chose to retain, so I got that. Um, it was more offensively or bulky offense, and now I wanted like a tank. And a tank is a mon that can take a hit as well as dish him out, and that is exactly what Tangrowth can do. Uh, so basically this will be a Pokemon. You'll probably be seeing me run offensive and defensive throughout the UCL. Uh, it has two great abilities as well, being Regenerator and I think Chlorophyll. Now it doesn't have the best speed. I believe it's 199 max neutral. Yep, 199 max neutral and uh, 218 uh, timid max. But obviously I can double that and you have to be like a strong Scarfer or... Um... Yeah, honestly that's probably it. 
that can outspeed me. Or like a Mega, like, um, well, I don't even know if Mega Lopini at level 50 could outspeed me. But um, at plus 2, I don't feel like calcing it either. Uh, but normally, obviously, 199. If I go 218, the Mega Lopini cannot outspeed me. If I go max speed, uh, timid, the Mega Lopini cannot outspeed me. And I can even use Sunny Day Solar Beam, Sleep Powder, Hidden Power Fire. So, Tangrowth just gives me a lot of versatility in what it wants to do. It can be a physical wall. I can run an Assault Vest and tank special hits. For example, I can tank a Draco Meteor or a Draco that has been dropped. <laughs> One might say, uh, drop a Draco. <laughs> I don't know who would say that though. Uh, sounds like a cool catchphrase. But um, yeah, from Life Orb Latios or Latias, which have both been picked up, unfortunately not by me. And uh, knock them off, get rid of their Life Orb, basically Tangrowth walls them. And it just gives me that support. Now, next up, my second pick for RU was originally Kofagius. I really wanted Kofagius. It gave me a Trick Room Setter, it gave me Status, it gave me a Ghost Type, a Spin Blocker. Unfortunately, that was picked up. And my third pick was uh, Magneton because I had drafted a dragon. I had drafted two dragons, Kirim Black and Garchomp, and Magneton getting rid of steel types like Skarmory and Ferrothorn. Not that Garchomp or Kirim Black really care about Skarmory or Ferrothorn. Both of them can muscle through with fire moves or strong ice moves or even an electric fusion bolt from, um, from Kirim Black. But it would just be nice to have Magneton, not to worry about that, and also have the alien analytic. But my fourth, you know, overall in my draft plan, uh, my fourth Mon was Almamola. And the reason I wanted this mod is because it's, it adds on to Regenerator. It has a great ability in Regenerator, so again, getting that HP uh, back. And look at this HP stat. Base 165. Now, it only has base 80 and base 45 special defense, which may not seem a lot, but when you have 534 max HP, obviously it's like half of that when you're at level 50, but when you have... Um, such a huge HP stat, you are passing huge wishes, and that is exactly what Alamola can do. It can pass gigantic wishes, and to my Pokemon like Mega Aggron, who is really bulky but doesn't have solid recovery, I can pass a fat wish to that thing, get it all the way back to full, if not near full, and um, also tank hits. I have Utility, and Scald, Knockoff, and Toxic, and I'm pretty much uh, a great support Pokemon. I mean, it does have access to Calm Mind. Uh, you probably won't see me run that, unless I want to be really heat. I don't know, it depends. If, if Calm Mind Alamola is the way to win a week, because the, normally the way I build my teams is I make sure that the six that I bring can beat all 12 of my opponent's Pokemon, whatever combination of 12 they can bring. So, let's say uh, that's my way of winning, then I'll do that. It also has access to Magico, Ice Beam. I mean, it has Piss Poor Special Attack. Its attack isn't that bad though, base 75, but typically you're not using Waterfall because Scald burns. Why would you use Waterfall when Scald can burn? Unless there's a situation where a Pokemon can get up a sub, but even then, usually they can get up a sub on Alamola. We'll see. And there might be an instance where I run Scald and Waterfall. Waterfall to break a sub and Scald to burn them. <laughs> uh, and, um... It also has a really cool option in potentially healing Wish. So if I don't really need a third or a fourth move on this thing, and I want to bring back a member, uh, Alamola will usually eat a hit. Any super effective hit, Alamola can usually tank if I EV it the correct way. And healing Wish obviously brings back a Pokemon, gives it a second chance. And um, that's pretty much what you'll be seeing from Alamola. I really just wanted a bulky Mon to give me Wish support to my other bulkier Mons, and, as well as Pokemon like Garchomp and Aggron. Basically two Pokemon that can tank whatever hits and can dish them out as well, but they just don't have reliable recovery. And with Wish from Alamola, oof, those Mons are coming back. Now, obviously I do have two water types now in Manaphy as well as Alamola, but I, I don't even care. I feel like stacking weaknesses, and weaknesses in general are overrated in the, um... Overrated is in a sense that, let's say, oh man, dude, you're, you you don't have a Dark Resist on your team. Yeah? I have an Alamola and a Tangrowth. I can pivot between Pokemon like Houndoom. My boy Tangrowth ain't dying to no Weavile. Alamola does not care and just wishes it back up. So it's things like that, like, and, and obviously Mega Aggron. Um, and just, like, I can play around certain things. And I will obviously, you know, my team, I'll make it fit to what I need it to do. I'll make sure that I don't lose to a specific mon uh, because of that. But, I mean, it doesn't have a bad move pool. Shadow Ball, Psychic, Scald, Ice Beam, Hidden Power of Choice, Knock Off. Um, but typically, you won't be seeing me run an offensive. It has a great support move in Icy Wind as well, as well as Refresh. 
Uh, soak Toxic could be cool. Who knows? Uh, but typically you won't be seeing me run offensive. But again, it really depends on the opponent I'm playing and what I feel will be best versus them. Now my last RU pick, basically everything I wanted got sniped and I got everything else that I wanted. I wanted Embor, sniped by Miguel. I wanted uh, Rotom Cut, that was picked up. Um, I wanted... There's another one. There's another one. It's probably a spike star. You know what? Let me just show you guys. The draft is already over. Blah, blah. Did you see that? You guys can see that. Alright, so this was my draft plan. Um, disregard how disgusting it looks. I made this with CBB. And we just started adding Pokemon. But uh, are you also as well? I wanted Meloetta. Um, but my loader was taken, and obviously Selgor was sniped as well. Disregard spelling and all that crap too. Um, and, uh, we can actually look at this right here. Bronzong, I don't believe, was taken. But because I got, uh, Tangrowth and Mega Agron, Agron maybe Bronzong was taken. Are you, 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 no. Dugshiro was taken from me, which is what I wanted as well. Gone. Meloetta was taken. I thought Meloetta would be really cool too because I could run special or physical. So that was taken, unfortunately. But I was like, okay. Ooh, that's the entire Bronze Matrix, by the way. Uh, shout out to Lucky for that. You can obviously see them here. But uh, I'll show that again at the end. But shout out to my boy Lucky Lad TV for that. But I realized, wow, Flagon wasn't taken. And um, Flagon gives my team a ground immunity. It gives my team defog support. It gives me a U-turner. Um, it, it gives me tailwind support. It gives me stab, earthquakes, outrages, uh, the ability to run special with Draco and uh, fire blast, and a nice switching for fire types as well that can wall Pokemon like Mega Camera up or Camera up in general. But basically, I decided on Flagon because defog. Last year, I had one Rapid Spinner and one form of Hazard Control on my Clay at all, and I only brought that once. I also feel like the way I drafted my Mons, I don't really care too much about Hazards, uh, because Reuniclus doesn't care. Um, you saw that I have a Garbodor, and I'll talk about why I have that later, but T-Spikes, I don't care about that. And, um, like, my Pokemon just don't usually care. I make my draft that way, or I make my Pokemon in a sense that I can take on whatever playstyle my opponent wants to bring. So, a uh, Flagon gives me a good scouter, and most importantly, like I said, a ground immunity and a defogger. Um, obviously, it also adds on to what people have been calling me the Dragon Trainer uh, Joey, or Dragon Tamer Pokey MMD. Uh, but it obviously adds another Dragon type, and base 100 speed, and base 100 attack. It might seem pretty weak, but you know, you couple that with hazards, you couple that with priority U-turn, giving me a Pokemon that can scout, and Flygon just becomes, you know, a decent asset to the team. I haven't decided on nicknames for most of my Mons yet. Um, the OU Mons all have nicknames, but outside of that, and then some of the UU Mons, like Reuniclus. I am hard body! You were just Reuniclus. I was so happy to get that thing back. Uh, but I haven't decided on nicknames, so I'll decide on that as we keep going. Normally it depends on how I feel what we nickname them. But uh, Flagon just gives me that ground immunity, and I can run leftovers, I can run defensive sub-toxic. Like, I, and I ran that in DPP, by the way, and it's actually put in work. When you pack that, or like a Magneton, which I unfortunately don't have. I also have Dragon Tail for support. Um, and, and just Roost, it has reliable recovery. So, people say Flagon's bad. I disagree that, until proven otherwise, I don't think a Pokemon can be bad in League format. And uh, especially when you can see what your opponent brings. So if I can just cater my Flygon to take on, what, Embor? I can make this Flygon take on Embor. Unless he has HP Ice, he's not oko on me. I can make it physically defensive. Embor can't oko on me if I'm, if I'm physically defensive. It's just things like that. Um, not that, you know, Miguel's probably running, uh, watching this. And he'll probably run HP Ice on Embor. But that doesn't matter. I'm running special defensive now, bro. Yeah, go ahead and knock me out now. <laughs> I'm just gonna run Scarf, dude, and just Earthquake you. Anyway, uh, it's just things like that, and I feel like Flygon just gives me the default, which is the most important thing. Uh, just that support, as well as U-Turn for scouting and utility. Now, next up, this was my number one, as you can see right here. It was my number one NU pick that I wanted. And for NU, I actually ended up getting randomized again, and I ended up getting fifth again for NU, so the luck was really on my side. Uh, this draft because I always got to get my first pick that I wanted. I think that was most important for me And then I got two picks pretty much back to back 
after that when after like an hour and a half went by so a lot of pokemon would drop after that but as long as i got my first pick i would base my draft around that as you can see i have a first and i have like something like here Cinder's crust of no Amistar or selgo or garbador one two smeargo if i don't get right on like basically i had backup plans for my backup plans and um yeah so aim the ride on named after myself because it's actually uh you know based on the bar of jay which aiming for the horn that's my ride on loss but and also Renaclis says, I am hard body, you are just Renaclis. I actually named them after them, even though they're not necessarily good, but I turned them into something good. But Rhydon is back, and uh, unfortunately it has pretty much useless abilities, unless I'm running like double edge on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, it gives me a strong Violet user, and I'm typically always going to run Violet on Rhydon, unless I am running Choice Ban, and it's just an incredibly bulky mon. I actually wanted this mon over Rhyperior just for the fact that I could run a Violet on it, and uh, it gives me a potential Trick Room abuser if I do choose to go with Trick Room. Um, it has Stealth Rock. It is immune to, um, it is immune to electricity. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? It is immune, <laughs> it is immune to electric type attacks, and, um, it just hits hella hard. Uh, look at these, uh, look at this attack stat. So it has a pretty decent attack stat. Uh, capping out at uh, what I believe is, yeah, 360. Which I believe is 394 actually when you max it out. 251 EVs. Yeah, uh, 31 EVs. <laughs> I also did that yesterday with Kiram. But it has an incredibly high attack stat. Access to Roar. Access to Dragon Tail. Last year I actually used Avalanche because last year and again like this year actually this year I'm packing a dragon resist great uh, and a fairy resist as well but last year I didn't have the best options for a Pokemon like Haxorus and right on was just a check I made it physically defensive I can take the plus one outrage plus one EQ with a life orb and knock it out with avalanche and things like that so it gives me a nice dragon check as well a nice physical wall uh, I have a, a couple of those but also gives me the potential of running um, I started typing dual dance, but swords dance, rock polish sets, or just swords dance sets. It just gives me a nice stop to those ground moves, forces them to run HP grass, which doesn't even knock me out if I am uh, built to take it, like especially defensive with my Violite, and I can knock out a lot of Pokemon. Like Agron doesn't, uh, right on, excuse me, does not go down to too many moves. Unless it's a very, very strong stab, like water attack, or a very, very strong stab, grass attack. But it just gives me a powerful tank once again. And it did so well last time, and I really, really wanted this because um, I just wanted that ground type that isn't like Garchomp and weak to ice four times. Uh, obviously, this thing is four times weak to water and uh, gra uh, grass, excuse me. But I didn't want it to be four times weak to ice again. And this is another mod that, yeah, it's weak to Weavile, but it could take it on. Yeah, it's weak to Malasong, but it could take it on. Um, so it just gives me that ground type. And uh, just a great mod with potential to stop a lot of physical threats. With potential of Fire Punch for SD Scissor. I even can run Fire Blast, even though it doesn't have the best special attack. But it'll still nuke something that's four times weak to it. Why do they always give him 30? Why is it giving it zero constantly? But yeah, anyway, that's what I want to ride on. Uh, next up now, as you can see from my draft plan... My number two pick, well, my number one pick, if I didn't get right on, would have been Mesper. Mesper just gave me um, a ground immunity as well as um, as well as healing with support and just ridiculous like stats. And then Miltank was there. Now my second pick, I chose Garbodor. Now the reason I chose Garbodor is because Amistar was taken by Nappy and uh, Selgo was sniped up, and a lot of people, a lot of people, had poison types that can learn Toxic Spike, and. Uh, Again, I don't usually care about the hazards, but Toxic Spikes could be annoying. I do have Defog, I do have Magic Guard, I do have Hydration, whatever on the team. I have support for it, but I wanted a Spike Stacker. I really, really liked what Esu Ninja did last year in my SL Gore, and I was really sad that uh, Dan actually picked it up, ironically, because uh, it put in the most work versus Dan in the finals. Um, it put in a lot of work every single game, honestly, whenever I brought it. But uh, I just got that little spike, and that little spike can win games. But I wanted Garbodor because I could absorb T-Spikes, and I can get up hazards of my own. And Garbodor is really cool with the ability, uh, weak armor, as well as aftermath. So two pretty solid abilities. Even Stench, if I want that 10% chest flinch, it doesn't really matter for me. Uh, but weak armor, if I get hit... 
uh, if physical attacks, I get the plus one speed, which is cool because I can get off like a last ditch ever. Maybe if I order like a focus sash, uh, dual spike set with explosion, and if they hit me, I get the speed boost. I can explode on their defog or rapid spinner. Um, but it also gives me aftermath to punish those physical attacks that knock me out and take off a chip of their HP. And I can run Rocky Helmet or Black Sludge. Uh, but like I said, it gives me spike support. It gives me poison types. It gives me a fighting re uh, resist as well as a fairy resist as well as a grass resist so it's just a solid pokemon in um general i feel and um yeah it also has strong moves and gunk shot basically has decent attacks as well it's base 82 defense and special defense with base 80 hp so it's not that bad it's pretty tanky um, it's average in tank and it has clear smog explosion in focus flash i've run focus flash for uh I've ran Focus Blast for like Steelix and, and you before, um, as well as options like Pain Split, Haze, which is the same thing as Clear Smog, but it's everything, and uh, even like Seed Bomb. Uh, spikes and Toxic Spikes are probably the most important thing, as well as being able to absorb Toxic Spikes upon switching. So it gave me a Hazard Setter, which I think is, you need that. I did talk about earlier that I feel like Hazards are overrated sometimes versus certain teams. Like, versus me, I'm not too worried about Hazard, especially because I have a Defogger, and, like, again, my Arena Clips didn't care about that. I usually built my team to take on. Like, last year, I was fine with Hazard, but I feel like a lot of people stepped it up this year, took note, um, and, uh, took notice, and, uh, decided to get Spike Stacker. So, really smart plays on everybody's part in the draft, um, but Spike should be good for assuming some kills, and I'll keep him up on the field. I feel like I, like, contradicted myself, but... Whatever. Um, basically, it just gives me a great mon that can go especially defensive as well as physically defensive because it has both the same bulk. Uh, I could see myself running maybe especially defensive for like a potentially a Ludicolo. Not that I'm too weak to a Ludicolo. A Ludicolo could be annoying. But like special defensive, I could take a rain boosted Hydro Pump, knock it out with Gunk Shot, things like that. Most of the time, you'll be seeing this thing set up spikes. Maybe uh, an offensive set if it's necessary, a Seed Bomb for like those ground and rock types. And um, yeah, so I want a Garbodor. Now, Last up on my list, um, Tauros was an option, Tauros got sniped, Smeargle was an option, Smeargle got sniped, I didn't want Cross though because I already had Garbodor, um, Skuntank got picked up as well, Steelix I didn't really need because I got Mega Aggron, and um, as well as Rhydon, so I have that ground typing, I have that steel type, and uh, it was between Pokemon like Pelipper and a fire type. Now I didn't have a fire type on my team, and I was debating between Pyroar and Combusken, um, I'm not sure if Combuskin actually got picked up. You can actually check out right here. For any, I love how Twit actually picked up the day, and that's funny. I don't think Combuskin ended up getting picked up. A uh, Miltank did as well, so I couldn't get that. Now, I was thinking about Combuskin because it's that speed boost, and I can pass speed. I can't pass Swords Dance plus speed because um, we're playing by Smogon rules. So, it's a Smogon uh, rules for Baton Pass as well, so I can only pass the speed stat. And that would be cool for Pokemon like Manaphy with Tail Glow. But I honestly didn't... I just didn't want to be that slow with Combuskin. Even after protecting, it's still really slow. And I wanted immediate speed. Uh, something to threaten opposing Steel types. Uh, with good coverage as well in Hyper Voice. And that's why we picked up Pyroar. Uh, Pyroar gives me a nice choice specs. Even a nice choice scarf. Uh, Life Orb user. It has access to Taunt. It has a nerve, which is really cool for berries, and I feel like that's extremely underrated in this too. A nerve is just so cool for berries, and you'll more than likely see me run that more so than Rivalry or Moxie. Moxie's more so for physical, obviously, and Rivalry, again, I, 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 I wouldn't risk that. Though I can swap between girl and guy, we'll see how that works. But uh, a nerve is really cool because let's say your opponent has a Pokemon like Gastron, and they're like, okay, well, I am four times weak to grass, let me run a Rindo Berry. Well, I'm going to pop them with HP Grass from my Pyro anyway, if they switch into like a Fire Move plus HP Grass, because a nerve doesn't care about your berry, and break them through that. I also have options, like I said, Taunt, and I have Endeavor. I've actually ran a Focus Sash set with this before, like a kill for kill type of mon, but of course, Hyper Voice, um, Fire Blast, Hidden Power, Fire Fang, what? Hidden Power of my choice. I have Wild Charge as well, uh, so I can go Mixed, um... Facade as well, if I get like toxic or something like that. Options like Will O Wisp and Toxic as well. So I just wanted that fast fire type and um, something that could just threaten opposing steel types. Uh, I don't know if I, I really did want Combuskin. I was just going back and forth with this. Pelipper was also an option, but 
I really wanted that fire type, and I didn't want three water types. I know Pelipper would have been cool, though, for Defog, but again, I just really, really wanted that fire type and that resistance to steal. And um, it was between this and Combustion, and maybe I'll regret not having Combustion this season because, you know, speed boost to speed pass to something like Garchomp or Manaphy sounds pretty broken, and they'll definitely be able to come in and tank the hits. Um, but I just wanted that immediate speed and that immediate base 109 special attack, so that immediate power uh, as well. Uh, which is why I ended up going with Pyro Roar, and um, yeah, we'll see how this thing does. Um, that's my draft. This is the entirety of the Bronze Bear Takes for Season 2. I very much like my draft. I have ridiculous offense in Kiram Black, Manaphy, Garchomp. I have solid tanks like Tangrowth, Mega Agron, uh, Garbodor, Rhydon, and then I have, oh, I guess you consider. Runiclus and Snorlax tanks as well because they tank hits and they dish them out. So I have Trick Room Setters. I have potential with that. I have Bulk in the back with uh, the Regenerator Core of Tangrowth plus Alamola. I have Defog, so I actually have Hazard Control as well as T-Spikes Control in Garbodor. And I even have a, a Fast Fire type in Pyroar. So it should be a pretty fun season. Um, the first week... Oh, uh, it doesn't have it here, but the Bronze Spare Ticks are taking on... The um, the bronze paratics are taking on the South Beach Sloking, so we're taking on David for week one. Then week two we take on A Drive. And then week three we take on Patters. Then week four we take on Mega Mogwai and Miguel. So it'll be pretty fun. Week one we take on, um, like I said, um, David, who has a really really strong draft in like Mega Altaria, Landorus T, Caldeo Ente, Bulk and Porygon. And then he has like the pa the potential of like nasty plot passing with Togetic and even a Toxic Spike Absorber as well. The good thing about his team is um, he does have a, he does have Defog support obviously, but we'll see. Anyway, we'll see how we take him on. Then we take on the person we beat for the finals, A Drive, who actually ended up beating me in regular season last year. And then we take on the person who we played for semifinals, which is Patters. And then we take on Miguel, who has won a championship in the GVA. So it'll definitely be a fun. Like a really fun and um, I I'm looking forward like for the competitive like just the challenges like uh, just to start it off. I'm really happy that I have such strong opponents and not to say anybody isn't strong in this because I feel like everybody stepped up their draft game. For example, um, and I think his draft is extremely good. Uh, Christian, Fane Attacks, he ended up going 0 and 15 maybe last year, 0 and 16 last year. Which sucks, right? But that was because he drafted Pokemon like Bayonet, Lopany, and Sableye. And then he had like Mighty Anna, Electrode. This time, his first draft was Ladia. Sniped it from us. Then he drafted Rotom Wash. Then he drafted Ferrothorn. That in itself... Is ridiculously good. And then he drafted Whimsicott to patch up that dark... Uh, that dark, quote-unquote, weakness right there. And then Needle Queen, Mian Shao. So he has a really, really solid draft, and uh, I'm really happy at how everybody improved this season, and I'm really excited to see how we'll all do, um, and how the Bronze Baratics will do in this season of the uh, UCL. So of course, if you are hype, if you are supporting the Bronze Baratics, feel free, of course, to say that in the comments. Say whatever you want. Honestly, um, always down for some feedback. And, uh, yes, yeah, Subhub is actually going to be postponed again for the middle of the week just because it was last week. So I figured let's bring it back this week in the middle of the week. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys all enjoy. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe, do your thing. And uh, I will see you guys later. Goodbye.